Hi, it's Dre Griggs of the Ascending Wisdom. Today we'll discuss building income streams and managing your money in retirement. The number one fear that most of us have in retirement is running out of money. We don't want to have to go back to work. We've already withdrawn. In fact, retirement, that's what it means to retire, is to withdraw from. Now, we haven't withdrawn from everything, but we withdrew from the life of having to trade our time for money. And we are now in a place of our life where we have our money working to make more money. And as a result, we often are not used to that. And the fear and the uncertainty and the overall anxiety around the idea that I don't work for my money, where I have a set amount of money that's coming in and I have to make decisions based off of that. If, if you had a job where you could just work overtime, then you would just work overtime and you can get more money where you don't have the, the income levers that you normally can pull. Or at least that's what most people think. The reality is you can design multiple income streams to help you to be able to maintain the exact lifestyle that you already had, if not improve it, because you have more of your time. The reality that most of us face when we work actively for our money is we're not sure what to spend the money on. And what I mean is it was always difficult for me to be able to uh, take a you know a two week vacation and then you would you'd spend a certain amount of money and the money that you would spend may be two months, maybe three months or whatever the ratio is, but it was significantly more of your time that it took to generate that money than the benefit that you're going to receive of whatever the trip and the vacation is that you're taking. And so the best thing that you can do to be able to enjoy your retirement is to be able to build an income that is no longer tied to your time as soon as possible. Whether you want to retire in five years, whether you're already retired, the flexibility that you give yourself and the freedom that you give yourself is, well, now I'm not saying it took me a month to get this income. Can I possibly spend it on a weekend happily? Now you're saying, well, this income is being generated by money and it's going to be here tomorrow. And it's going to be some more the next day. And there's going to be some that's going to come in while I'm on vacation because the money's going to keep flowing. And as a result of separating your time for your money, then you no longer feel like, oh, I, I can't spend my time here. Because if I spend my time there, then I'm not going to be making any money. And so it puts you in a really good situation. Now, you guys know I always tell you that 65% of millionaires, according to the IRS, have at least three streams of income. And there are seven streams of income that the IRS says that they recognize. The first one is active income, where you work for your money and then you spend your money. And then you have to work for your money and then you spend your money. That is where 70% of people, 90% of people, that's how they generate their income. And as a result, that's why about 60% of those that work live paycheck to paycheck, because that is the most inefficient way for you to generate an income. That's why about 50% of people who are going to retire, are retiring broke, which just means they have less than $5,000 in their account. I think the number says like 80% of people who have a financial emergency, they, they don't have an emergency fund where they don't have the money that's set aside, whether you're talking about $1,000 or even $10,000, where they just don't have the access to the money that they would need because having only active income is the most inefficient and difficult way for you to be able to build wealth and achieve financial freedom for your retirement. So when it comes to the other six income streams, if you are, want access to this, um, have the guidebook, it's free. All you have to do is go to obsidianwisdom.com forward slash retirement income and I'll put a link in the description and you can go through the guidebook where I go over each of the six income streams that you would want to have and how you can achieve them and maybe some of the benefits of them. So the first one is capital gains. Capital gains is a very fancy way of saying that your money is invested in the stock market and if you leave it in there for a year and a day then it's not taxed as normal income. It is now taxed at a much lower and favorable income bracket. So your capital gains tax currently is at about 15%. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this list is the amount of wealth that you have is tied to the benefits that you provide to other people. So if you invest your money in the stock market, you are helping certain companies to provide a benefit to their consumer, which is why when I talk about investing, that we're not talking about finding a meme stock or the next big thing because those companies may or may not be providing a value to the consumer that is generating the revenue that you then get paid because you help them to generate that revenue. As a result, I find companies that are fantastic companies, companies that if they came and talked to me on Shark Tank and I was sitting there going through the numbers, that I would say, yeah, that's a good investment. I would love to partner with you on your future adventures. And that way, when I give my money, when I buy these stocks, if I'm looking at it as buying companies, 
then I don't get caught in the gambling aspect of the stock market where people are just trying to find the next hottest things and as a result you end up doing what you end up buying high and selling low which is a recipe for disaster so instead I find companies at great prices where I've done the research I know what I believe the company to be worth I've read what um, I've read what other experts believe the company is worth and then when the company hits around that number I will buy the stock and then I will keep it and maintain it just the value that I provide other people the more value that you provide the more money that you have if you think of the wealthiest people in the world then you know that they provide the value to the most people in the world I and mean, that's just an absolute fact number two is you have your investment income investment income is a very fancy way of saying dividend income so when you invest in certain companies they will pay you a dividend and a dividend just is a way of the company saying you as an owner of this company we think it's a better idea to pay the owners than it is for us to reinvest the profits into the company now when you listen to that if you the company isn't large or the large market share and significant um, control and, and revenue then that doesn't really make sense right if you're a smaller company growing then it totally makes sense for you to reinvest the money in the company to grow my investment I don't really want the dividend in that case which is why more times than not if you're looking for investment income you should invest in what we call blue chip stocks which is a very fancy way of saying these are companies that have been around for a long time they generate a lot of revenue so this will be like your AT&T's your Google's where these are significantly sized companies that can't do much more as far as market share and growth and as a result they start sharing some of the profits with their shareholders and the owners of the company which is you and me and so if the company is smaller and has a lot of growth it doesn't it doesn't really make a lot of sense for them to pay a dividend and we call that the dividend trap where there are smaller companies that don't have a lot of revenue and they're giving you a large amount of their dividends to be able to entice you to buy stock in the company don't fall into the dividend trap it has to make sense from a company perspective to give me some of the profits because they're already just doing gangbusters it just doesn't make sense for them to reinvest the company into the company if it makes sense for them to reinvest in the company then you might be falling into a dividend trap and so you just want to be careful about that the third one is your rental income for most of us that's real estate real estate is a fantastic retirement stream there are some people that pay their entire retirement through real estate income there are others where they supplement a portion of it I'm someone who believes that if you want to have the three streams of income then more times than not I would say you want to be in the stock market you probably want to have a business and then you want to have real estate I think those are three fantastic streams to work towards now granted you can have up to all seven streams if you really want to 65% of self-made millionaires have at least three streams of income the number drops on around like 45% of self-made millionaires have at least four streams of income and then it's like 35% of self-made millionaires have at least five streams of income and so the magic number to me at least what I've seen is you want to have at least three streams so if you have those three streams you're putting money inside of each of those they're growing whether you look at real estate and you say I want to make a 10% return every year and then you may sell the real estate in 10 years but like, all right I made my 10% return renting it out and now I'm going to sell it and the appreciation and the overall cost being lowered from the rental income you now can sell it and say okay now I've made enough that I can put this money into these other streams and then I'm done right? I don't, I don't want to do it now you may do it the other way where you start in the stock market because the stock market has the lowest barrier of entry you can buy stock for a dollar and then you let that money grow and I, I normally tell people if you're in the stock market if you're buying companies in equity you, you should normally plan to keep the company for at least five years so you have a five-year plan you're investing the money and then as that money grows you may take out a portion of that and then invest in real estate now you were saying well Dre how do I know when it's time for me to sell or which stocks to sell uh, normally you would sell if you were able to find a better place to put your money so if you were getting a certain company was getting you a 10% a, a return and you found real estate that gets you a 15% return well that makes sense to sell the stock to buy the real estate now other times it makes sense to sell if the reason you bought the stock has changed so if you liked leadership or they kept their debt in control or everybody was using their product whatever the situation was when the underlying conditions change the reason that you bought the stock is no longer true that's also a great time to sell because usually that's a sign that things may be shifting against that company and like all companies some of them are seasonal and then like all companies some of them are, are about to go away right like a blockbuster right the overall environment has changed 
And then when you look at even great companies like Netflix, the overall environment has changed. What do I mean? Well, Netflix was originally like the only streaming giant. And so it was just everybody would put their movies on Netflix. Now the environment has changed. How has it changed? Well, everybody has their own streaming service and everybody has their own content. Now Netflix is, has to make their own movies, which they're doing fine on. They're making their own movies, and they may be able to weather this change, but the overall environment has changed significantly. Everybody is streaming, and then it may be the way that cell phones were, where when I first started cell phones, they used to have plans that they would charge you by the minute. And then if you went over the minutes, you would, you would uh, have this crazy bill at the end of each month. And then eventually, other companies entered the cell phone industry, and when they did that, someone went and said, you know what, people are tired of counting their minutes and waiting for nights and weekends. What we are going to do is just give you an all-inclusive plan. You don't even have to think about the minutes. Well, everybody loved that. Everybody loved the fact they no longer had to count it. And as a result, all of the companies now generally offer an all-inclusive plan where your data, you don't have to count your data, you don't have to count your minutes, and you just can talk on your phone. And so that shift took away a lot of the profits in the cell phone industry because when people entered it, I believe that that's most likely what's going to happen with the streaming industry as well. There are so many streaming options that it just seems like it makes sense that at some point someone's going to do something drastic with the price and then it's going to cause everyone to say, you know, we can't compete the way that we used to because everybody now has three, five, ten different streaming options. And so as those situations change, you may say, you know what? I need to sell some of the stock and then I can buy something else. The fourth one is your royalty income. So for most people, royalty income falls under the business income. So you can write like a book and then your book can sell and you can get speaking engagements or you can have a course, an online course or a membership site. I find that when you talk about royalties in 2023 and beyond, I think the best thing you could do is have some sort of a service based option where you're helping people to get a particular result. So financial planning, I am in a service based business as a fiduciary financial planner. I will help people, you know, from from goals to achievement. I'll help people from financial worry to financial confidence. And whether you take a monthly subscription service to where you keep track of all your finances yourself and you use the wisdom metric framework for that or whether you pay me and I do it for you, or whether you take a, a course and you go to one day live training, however that looks for you, I have different options available. Or even if you just buy some of my books where you're like, you know what, Dre, um, I'm early in the process, I just wanna be able to buy the book, or you, some of you will just watch the content. Even YouTube will, will ultimately pay someone for their views that they generate on the website. As a result, these are all, at least not all of them, but some of them would be considered royalty income. Anything that I put the work in early and then I don't have to do anything else. Now there's other types of royalty income where you invent something and then you do nothing else with that. And I always use the, the example of the Super Soaker gun. It was like a rocket scientist, which is just kind of a cool thing for me. And he was able to figure out how to do something with the water pressure in a water gun that had never been done before. And he did not open a a water gun manufacturing company. He just simply patented the idea and then he sold the idea to Super Soaker and then Super Soaker sends him a check every single month and they have been for decades. And he said that he's made, it's estimated upwards of 60 to $100 million based off the royalties from that idea. And so you can invent something that you lease out to another company, you can write a book, you can create a course, a membership site, however you want to do it and you can generate a monthly income that you're able to create that retirement stream and then you're able to maintain it the whole time. There's blogs that charge people, you know, $10 a month. If you look at most companies, the subscription model is basically royalty income. You do something once and then you get paid on it going forward and it is taking over as far as the economics that people are doing, right? There was a point in time that I could buy a workout DVD from Beachbody and now they have an online subscription. They're not selling the DVDs anymore. You have to pay monthly and then you stream it in and then they can get the income forever. I used to be able to buy an Adobe DVD and download the program onto my computer and they don't offer those programs anymore. Microsoft is the same way. All you can do now is pay a monthly subscription and then you can stream or download or update whatever the program is monthly. And so as a result, most people are already used to paying things monthly. And so you can build a really nice retirement income that way that is very, very passive. Uh, the fifth one is your interest income. 
and that's the money that you normally put where you get a set amount of money each month. It's usually a low amount because it's guaranteed. So this could be, you know, the debt where you buy the bonds from the government or a well-respected company because if they're paying you the interest on the debt that you loan them, then you have to invest in something that's going to be around for a while. And you don't want to invest in something that's not. Interest income is normally going to be the lowest form of passive income, right? Even in your savings account at your bank, you, you put the money in, they pay you like 0.001% or something. So you get a small percentage on that. But as a result, it is a set amount. You're, you're not at risk of losing your money. If you have $1,000 in your savings account, you'll probably have $1,000 tomorrow. It's unlikely that something is just going to uh, take away you know, all the money. You're not going to have $90 in your investment or in your savings account. And as a result, that's why the return is much lower on that because the risk is with the bank. The bank has to take the money and then they have to find a way to generate an income that's higher than the guarantees that they gave you. So whoever has the risk ends up getting the most money. So if you were to think of it from a doctor's perspective, if you worked in an ER versus if you had your own practice, you're going to get paid less in an ER because whoever built that hospital is taking on all the risk. Versus if you had your own practice, then you're taking on all the risk. If you don't have any clients, then you don't eat that day. But if you're an ER, you get paid your salary, so there's, there is no risk for you. And your salary is most likely going to be less than if you had your own practice. Same with lawyers. If you're a public defender versus you had your own law firm, there's a certain, um, there's a certain thing in that guarantees where it lowers the overall money that you can generate because whoever takes the risk gets the opportunity to generate the revenue. Now, whether that makes sense for you in retirement, as far as the risk and the revenue and the risk and reward is concerned, that's something that you probably want to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. But if you just want to be able to take a look at this information, then you definitely can download your free guidebook at obsidianwisdom.com forward slash retirement income, and you can take a look at it and decide for yourself. And then the sixth and final income stream that you can have is just profits from a business. So I tell people all the time, whether you want to be an entrepreneur and have your own business, or whether you want to invest in the stocks and become a business owner, that you want to be able to have some of your income coming from profits from a business. I will tell you that creating your own business will give you access to the royalty income and the overall profits from a business. And because most business owners reinvest in their business going forward, they don't usually have all the other retirement income streams. And so then it becomes an, um, it becomes a real situation where it may make sense for you to sell the business to fund your retirement. It may make sense for you to structure your, your departure in a way if you want to give it to your kids or something like that to where they give you a certain income every single month going forward. And then when you pass, they just get the business. There are so many ways for you to be able to structure your business to generate you the income that you want for the rest of your life where you don't have to worry about money and it's very resilient. Again, if you want to make sure that you build the proper retirement streams where you manage your money, where you don't feel like back in the day when I used to have to count minutes to make sure I didn't go over, you don't want to have to be counting your money to make sure that you're good, then you want to have at least three streams of income. Because 65% of self-made millionaires have at least three streams of income, it lets me know that if I model this successful, then it increases the likelihood that I won't run out of money in retirement. Now, whether or not I become a millionaire, I don't know. But I at least know that I can build the income streams to where I don't have to think about money. I don't have to worry about money. I don't have to make decisions that are focused and money driven. I can make decisions that are focused on fulfillment and enjoyment, spending time with my family, my friends, my loved ones, and supporting causes that I believe in. If you found value in this video, I ask you to like and subscribe. If you want to keep receiving information on the best ways to manage your retirement, whether you want to retire at 30 or 130, 